Welcome to Muslim Apologetics Australia. The topic of the video, karma is a bitch. So let's listen to Ukraine and how they feel when they get bombed. When I see pictures of Mariupol, it feels like looking at your dead relative. Places which are dear to you, to see them destroyed, to see them burned down. It's heartbreaking. I want to come back home, but I don't have home anymore. Sometimes it actually takes an event like this to happen and see how it feels what Muslims have been feeling. Not a single one of the Western nations condemned Putin for bombing Syria. That looked far worse than your dead relative. Bombing Afghanistan indiscriminately, turning the place into rubble, Iraq, destroying it to the ground, where these people have to rebuild their lives from scratch. They don't have a place to live. Asylum seekers, where do they go? You at least in Ukraine have the funding of the West. You at least don't have closed borders. The whole European nations have opened their borders. Right? Muslims, to go to Europe, they had to escape, go through long different journeys, different pathways, treacherous, with a few blankets holding their children in their hands. You caught train a train to Europe. <laughs> Open borders. Poland accepted you. Muslims were barricaded. They were in the cold, hard wire with security police officers pointing guns at them. So maybe, maybe now you will humble yourself and treat asylum seekers as humans. When they're running from war-torn countries, you'll be a lot more sympathetic. Instead, what we heard, oh, you all cows, you should all sit back and fight. You know, you're all cowards. You know, stay back. Don't come to Europe. You know, don't bring your wars to Europe. Stay where you are. You know, fight, fight back. Fight who? No weapons, no, we no planes, no tanks. Fight who? It's, it's easy to say fight when you're, when you're an Arab, when you're a Muslim, right? Yeah, no backing. No Western alliance and backing, no weaponry, no anti-aircraft missiles. Those poor Syrians, they had to burn tires to give enough smoke in the horizon just so the planes give it a bit of a break. Because when there's too much smoke, they don't know where they're bombing. They had to inhale all that toxic fume from the tires that was their weapons that was their defense and you say oh they should sit back and fight yeah absolute hypocrites absolute snakes and you know sometimes what's happening in ukraine and by the way i'm not condoning violence but sometimes something like this needs to happen so you can start becoming more human again Right? None of you condemned Putin when he was bombing Syria indiscriminately. Those bombs were coming like acid rain, like poison from the skies, along with Assad. None of you started you know, condemning Russia, boycotting Russia, uh, sanctioning Russia, freezing their bank accounts. None of that happened with Russia. None of that happened with Bashar al-Assad and Syria. Oh, but when blonde-haired, blue-eyed Christians are getting killed, then there's a uprising, then there's condemnation, 
then there's open the borders, we'll accept them. Why? Because you believe they're more human. They're more human than the Muslims. The Muslims are the barbarians. They're the ones that need enlightening. You know, they're, they're not human. Yeah, they're, they're, they're the barbarians, right? Hmm? And so we saw the treatment. We saw how they treated asylum seekers when they're Syrian and Muslim, Middle Eastern, and when they're from Ukraine. Show me a Ukrainian that got washed up on the sea. You know, jumping in the Red Sea to get to Turkey or whatever it is. Show me. Where is it? Where are, where are the photos and the images? I oh, know you got trains. You're escorted with trains. Right? Show me those photos. Show me the Greek Navy, naval forces shooting at asylum seeker boats. Of the Ukrainians. Oh, sorry, you didn't come. Show me where they started shooting at those trains. You know, don't come to our country. That's what they did to the Syrians. Hmm? So this is why we say karma is a bitch. So next time, you know, you go through war, destruction, poverty, suffering. This will teach you to be more um, sympathetic and condemn violence no, where, no matter where it is, and sanction any tyrant no matter where he's blowing up, not just when they're blowing up Christians and blue-eyed, blonde hair people. And now that you remain silent, you remain silent against the Syrians, now God has given you the same wrath. So now you can learn hopefully from this and be a lot more sympathetic and condemn when your neighbors are being attacked your neighbors are being bombed by putin but the racism is so huge you know oh the ukrainian people are so brave and they're fighting back and these people are god's chosen people and look at the resistance yeah i mean if you're given millions and millions and millions and millions of dollars of weapons, yeah, you'd, you'd fight back. You'd fight back. What was poured into the Syrians? What sort of money was poured in from, I mean, not just the Western nations, even the Muslim nations are guilty of this. What, what money was poured in? No, nothing. Nothing was poured in. But they were told that they were cowards for not resisting. In fact, when they were resisting, they actually said that they're terrorists, <laughs> right? Isn't it true? When they were resisting Bashar al-Assad and uh, the Russian forces, they, they, they said, no, no, these guys are terrorists. <laughs> Look at the double standards. First, they say they're cowards for running. All the men are running, you know, to Europe. Uh, but then when they stay back and fight, they're terrorists. So you know what we should do as Muslims? We should just turn a blind eye, like they turn a blind eye to Palestine, the suffering Muslims there. We should turn a blind eye to uh, Putin as a formal protest. You know, and some people say, "Oh, that's rich coming from someone who says that the you know that you know that Russia has bombed Syria and and all the Muslims there." Yeah. It is rich. Yeah, I did. And now we should support Putin just as the West supported and didn't condemn Putin for blowing up Syria. You all watch like it was a video game. Yeah. So that's what we'll do, guys. As Muslims, let's just look at it as just entertainment. You know, you're tired. You come from work. You want to see a few body parts being blown up, put on the TV. Uh, of course, they censor a lot of things there. Put, I don't know, go on Facebook, go somewhere and watch uh, Ukrainians and Russians just get blown up. Kafir killing Kafir, non-Muslim killing non-Muslim. Watch it. Because that's what they did, obviously. They sat back and watched. That's all they did. They went, oh, that's good. Muslims killing Muslims. Okay, Christians killing Christians. Let's watch it. They don't value our life. Why should we value theirs?
Now, isn't it interesting? Their whole narrative is, oh, these Muslims are terrorists. They're, invade, they're causing all the problems in the world, blah, blah, blah. And the world is literally at the brink of a nuclear war. And Muslims have got absolutely nothing to do with it. And it's just making it so painful for them to understand that this reality is now happening in our modern world. That Muslims have got nothing to do with the conflict of Ukraine and Russia. You know, this is really eating them up. It's eating people like Sam Harris. It's eating people like Richard Dawkins. You know, if Christopher Hitchens was alive, he'd be at it too. He'd be eating him up too. You know, it's eating them up because their whole narrative has been about Muslims uh, against human civilization. They want to destroy this world, whatever. And now what we're seeing is literally we're at the brink of a world war. We're at the brink of a nuclear war, you know, and it's it looks like it's going that way and no one can do anything about it. These people are supposed to be the most progressed, the most, you know, modern in the way they think about life and whatever. But they're ready to kill each other, even though they're both Christian nations and Jesus said, turn the other cheek. But, you know, we're always hearing, you know, all these Christians in the comments saying, oh, bless Israel. Sorry, bless Ukraine. Bless Ukraine. Let God help Ukraine. Let Help God, you know, defeat the Russians, blah, blah, blah. But all these born again Christians, where are they to say, no, Ukraine should just turn the other cheek. Ukraine should not fight. Ukraine should not resort back to violence. Ukraine should just accept their fate, you know, because Jesus said, whoever lives by the sword dies by the sword. None of that's being preached in the comments. It's all about Ukraine has a right to defend itself. Ukraine should fight and kill to their last breath. They're just warriors. You know, God blessed Ukraine. God save Ukraine, blah, blah, blah. But it seems to me that when it comes to Muslims, you know, they're always like, oh, you guys are jihadis. You're, you always want to fight and do holy jihad and war and whatever. You know, that's what they've been saying about Muslims. And, you know, in, in, in Christianity, we teach about love and tolerance and peace. And, but then when shit hits the fan and they're getting bombarded, they're never turning the other cheek. They're not preaching. They're not doing what they preach. It's about let's fund these guys with as much military equipment. Let's fight and kill other Christians. You know, when Muslims were killing Muslims, it's, you know, in the comments it was Allah or Allah snack bar, Allah snack bar, you know, making mockery of the Muslims. Yeah, 72 virgins, when you die in jihad, you go to 72 virgins. But we don't see any of those comments. Right. We don't see we don't see Jesus snack bar in the comments when it comes to Christians killing Christians. This was posted by Amnesty International. Have a look at this. That's why Ukraine's were treated with food and drinks and whatever. And on the bottom, this is how Poland treated the uh, Middle Eastern refugees like this. You know. And very lastly, before we conclude this video, anyone else notice that despite how much the West hates Russia, Western media never once depicts Russian soldiers or even Vladimir Putin as being a terrorist? It seems the term terrorist is only reserved for Muslims, but not if your skin color is white and have blue eyes. Yes, there are some cases where people with blonde hair and blue eyes have been labeled as terrorists, but it, it happens very, very rare. It's usually, oh, he's a shooter, oh, he's a lone wolf, oh, he's this. 
But why aren't we seeing that in Russia? Despite the Russians doing war crimes, despite them targeting civilian residential buildings, despite them targeting men, women and children, innocent, despite mass graves, despite news coming out that they're raping Ukrainians, their women, despite all of that, we're not seeing this. We're not seeing any of the Western media's putting up all these headlines, showing pictures of Russian soldiers and calling them terrorists. You're not finding that in Western media. Why is that? Now, interestingly enough, someone wrote and said, they sent me an article, US taking close look at labeling Russia as a state sponsor of terrorism report. <laughs> so apparently, apparently America is looking into trying to find enough evidence to try and label him as a terrorist. But I can assure you that if Putin was a Muslim, the very next day of war, he would be labeled as a terrorist like Osama bin Laden. There would be no, it might be on the cards, we're going to try and investigate and look, blah, 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 blah. And this exposes racism, Islamophobia, double standards.